Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? You guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook page um, with Brandy. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy, and I'm a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. And I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and so we're here tonight. It's Thursday night, so we're going to paint together tonight. You guys, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions as we go, so pop on and ask any questions you might have. We are going to talk about Moonshine Metallics tonight. Um, Moonshine Metallics are the Dixie Bell uh, Metallics, and specifically the colors that I'm going to be using are Steel Magnolia, which is this warm champagne. Um, it's not a gold, it's not a silver, but it's kind of a warm beigey color. I would compare it to the closest color in the regular paint line is going to be your Dixie Bell um, French Linen. It's like a metallic French linen. Um, so we're going to be using Steel Magnolia, and then I'm using the, um, the green metallic, which is called Deep Woods. Okay, um, let's talk about how I prepped the piece. The piece we're going to be working on tonight is this one behind me. So let me tell you everything that's underneath what I've got here tonight. Um, so if you guys are familiar with this style right here, the style of French Provincial Furniture, um, we all had this in our room in the 1980s when we were growing up, right? Because I had mine. Um, Me too. You did too? No way. No. <laughs> um, we've all, we all have the cell furniture. It's very common. Now, this piece is actually not that well made. And my this is a customer's piece. And she's fully aware of it. But the style and the shape and the size of the drawers suited her needs. So, despite its flaws in construction, we're redoing it. And you can absolutely redo these pieces. It's made of an MDF material. It's not solid wood, okay? And so what I'm looking at is, if I look at the back of these drawers right here, can you guys see how that's a composite material? That's not real wood, okay? Another way I can look at this and tell is look at the drawer box construction. Now this has a, a primer coat of Dixie Belle Slick Stick on it, um, but this, see how it's stapled? These are not solid wood drawer boxes. This is, they're held together with staples, not with a dovetail. So that's a couple tips on how you can look for um, what the drawer is made of. Now this down here, the, the bottoms are all plywood. Uh, I'm sorry, MDF, nothing on this is real wood except for maybe this top. In fact, the legs are even resin, they're plastic. Um, so, so even knowing that, it's we can still redo it. So what I started on this piece with, because it was not real wood, it had kind of a plastic veneer on it, um, was Dixie Bell Slick Stick. If it's not real wood, you need to start with Slick Stick. And that's going to be all your surfaces, like MDF, or MDF which is going to be covered in a laminate. Laminate, plastic, PVC, glass, metal, anything that's not wood, not a porous surface, you need to start with Slick Stick. So I started with the base of Dixie Belle Slick Stick on here. And then knowing I was going to do metallics, the metallics are um, less pigmented than the regular paints. So you want to start with a base of your regular paint for coverage underneath your metallics. So I started with French Linen, which was my closest to my top color. And then I used collard greens under Deep Woods, which is the green. Um, there's a few colors in the line that work under Deep Woods. I've heard people using Antebellum Blue under Deep Woods. Um, it's really just, it might pull undertones for it, but it's really just for coverage. And then you, and then like I said, you might pull some undertones from it. So in this case, collard greens. And then I've got a <coughs> coat of my metallics on here, one coat. Now, is it always necessary to throw a couple of coats of Slick Stick on? You should use two coats. For the full effectiveness of the product, Slick Stick is recommended at two coats. So I, you know, it, if you're priming a piece, you're going through the effort to prime it. I don't recommend ever cutting corners there. You're making the extra effort to prime it. Prime it the right way and follow the instructions on there if you want to get the full effectiveness of the product. So, um, so, and two coats are recommended with Slick Stick. And that's to make sure you get full coverage on it. Because if you don't have full coverage, you got streakiness or spottiness. Some spaces are going to be better or worse covered. What do we have? Two people on right now. Who's even watching this? You guys know the presidential debate is on tonight, right? <laughs> Rebecca was on here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to watch this tomorrow. I know. I know. Catch me on replay, you guys. Nobody contacted me <laughs> when they were scheduling the debate to tell me that it was tonight. Oh, I forgot to relay that to you because when I was talking to the moderator. Oh, yeah. They called yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I'm I mean, sorry. it was just a miscommunication. No, no, no. It, it, yeah, it wasn't, it was more of a formal lunch. It was a miscommunication, I think, you know, when they scheduled the presidential debate on my live night. <laughs> I tried. So I figure I'll have two people on and then everybody else can just watch on replay. Okay, let me tell you guys what else is on here. So this piece probably looks a lot more ornate than what it did when I first got it. So these little appliques on here, I added all of this. And what they are, are little chipboards, chipboard appliques. They're, they would be like a scrapbooking product. If you go to the scrapbooking aisle at your craft store, these are made by Little Birdie Crafts. And they're, it's a pressed paper board. But you guys think about it. If we put decoupage on our pieces and those are papers, we use wallpaper, those are papers. We use all kinds of things. This is absolutely a product that can go on furniture. I applied them with spray adhesive, placed them all throughout my piece, and then now it's coated by the paint and they're protected underneath that paint. Before I applied them, I did put a coat of shellac on them so that they were not porous because I didn't want them to swell. I wasn't 100% sure if they would swell with the moisture. So I did coat them in shellac first, but that's a cute little applique. Speaking of swell. <laughs> the presidential debate yeah. is swell. <laughs> We got a lot of swell. We got 220 swell people yeah, here chiming guys, in. I appreciate you guys more than ever. Are you guys just the people who voted early? Is that what we've got tonight? Um, I'll take that. 43 million viewers. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. We don't have we don't have um, early voting in California. So okay. So what I want to do tonight, you guys, is what you'll notice here is on my first coat, I just kind of met these two colors up with each other. But tonight I want to go through and I want to actually blend this section right here. So we're going to smear this out with our Moonshine Metallics. And I've got a couple ideas what we'll kind of play with um, in blending the Moonshine Metallics tonight. Did so, you just wink at me? <laughs> or do you have something in your eye? In your eye. <laughs> um, I don't want to disappoint you, but... Nah, I'm used to it. Okay, so I'm going to open up my Deep Woods and I'm going to open up my Steel Magnolia. What I want to try doing is I want to try if I mix pre-mix these colors before, if that helps me with my blending, I'm just going to try it. Truthfully, I haven't done it before, but I want to try it, so I might as well try it with you guys. I want to mix these into my middle color and see if that helps make the blend between these two a little bit easier. It's just a theory I have, which is usually all I'm operating off of. It's usually not fact-based. Yeah, no, totally not fact-based at all. We're going to test it out and see if it makes it any easier. Because truthfully, blending the metallic is, is more of a challenge than the regular paint. So if you already struggle, um, then this is going to be even more challenging. So what I did in this dish is I took a little bit of my deep woods and a little bit of my steel magnolia, roughly 50-50, because that's what I want to get to. And I'm mixing them together. So while you're doing that uh, monotonous stirring there, um, making I, me hungry. I think it's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> Jeopardy theme in the background. Um, the, the applique, what is that? It's a press, Where is it from? It's a press board made by little, or they're called ch prime chipboard. They're made by Little Birdie Crafts. I actually do have a link for these. If you guys either message me, um, or where where can I add this? I will add this to the link in my profile on um, Instagram, and it's I will pin it to the first post on my page on Facebook when I get off. If you give me a few minutes, and afterwards I will put this on my page, a link to these. They're they're a cool little product. So let me also give a shout out to this company because I think it's kind of cool. They also have a social mission, Little Birdie Crafts. Um, and it's a company out of India that employs women in India to make craft products. And it, it supports, it's a female owned business that, you know, women are making craft products for in India, which is an impoverished, impoverished country. So I kind of thought that was cool um, to support a social cause. And at the same time, I get to make beautiful furniture. But it is basically a craft store item that you would find in the scrapbooking section. And there are all kinds of products like that. I'm just mixing up more of this, you guys, because I didn't mix very much at first. You want a measuring stick or cup or anything? Nothing or? whatsoever. No? All like, right. I barely need a bowl. Winging it? Yeah. Like I could, I might Should I just stand here and just throw it at I'm the piece? I'm just pouring this on my piece. Okay, so let me show you guys this color. This is It's actually a really pretty color on its own. This would be a pretty color, but this is roughly 50-50 of Deep Woods and Steel Magnolia that I mixed up. So it leans a little bit green, but that's okay because my customer wants her piece to lean a little bit green. 
and that gives me a medium color. So now I've got three colors, my deep woods, my steel magnolia, and then my 50-50 mix down here. Okay, I'm gonna start by giving myself a little bit of wet paint in my steel magnolia. And I'm gonna use a lot of water to keep my metallics moving. So I'm gonna start by just dipping into my steel magnolia, a little bit of water on my surface. And that's because I wanna work into this line, so I need some wet paint here. Now I don't wanna go up here because I feel like my, my metallic coverage is really nice up there. I just wanna give myself a little bit of wet paint. And I'm really gonna blend, I'm figuring this will be my two drawers that I do my blending on. So now I'm gonna introduce my 50-50 mixture, which is a really pretty color. So when you put the uh, applique, by the way, I'm gonna count how many times I have to say that. <laughs> applique, um, applique. What did you use to attach it? Or uh, I used a Super 77 spray adhesive. And there's roughly, um, I don't know, 500 appliques on here if I was to count. That's an exact amount. I'm kidding, it's a lot. It took me quite a while. And then I just made sure I coated that in the paint to protect them so that I can brush over the top here. I made sure my glue was nice and dry. You don't wanna be trying to brush it while your glue is wet. Okay, so now I've got that medium color here and I'm gonna brush this. I'm coming back with my brush for my Steel Magnolia. And I'm just gonna even out this line right here. You guys, I think that 50-50 mixture is really gonna help me here. So that was an experiment, but I think it's gonna work. Yeah, it looks, like, looks pretty good. It's keeping me from hatching to um, brush these metallics together. So I say this all the time, when you're um, brushing metallics on, metallics are reflective. They have mica powder in them that reflects the light. This is gonna start looking a different color, but that's only because I'm gonna put wet paint over it. When it dries, it will dry to the same color that's above there. Um, metallics are reflective paint. So every brush stroke you put in a metallic paint, it's going to show a lot of water. If it starts getting sticky, I'm gonna add a little mist of water. So make sure, you'll notice I'm, I'm keeping my brush strokes all going in the same direction. Nice, clean, straight lines all the way across because anywhere I stop, you're going to notice that I stopped right there. Because a brush strokes on a metallic will show everything. So I like that medium color there. I'm gonna continue it on down. This is my 50-50 mixture that I made up to be this medium color in between the Steel Magnolia. And I feel like this is going to help me with my blending. It makes it not so harsh. Okay, I'm coming across with water because I want those nice, straight, even brush strokes. And if my brush goes eh, and then it sticks right here, I need it to keep gliding. So it's more to like lubricate the surface. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring my blend down here and then we're gonna work it into pure deep woods. I'm gonna dig it into my appliques a little bit. Okay, let me explain something else. I don't normally paint hardware, you guys. You guys notice oh. that? I don't normally paint my hardware. This hardware, I'll take a drawer out in a minute and I'll show you. This hardware is actually glued into the face of this. It's got grommets, but they're glued in. And so I could not take these out, and my customer knows this as well. I could not take these out without damaging the face of the drawers. So we talked about it and I'm gonna paint my hardware and then I will add some gilding wax and in the end it will still be distinct. Got a lot of fans of the 50-50 uh, mix. Yeah, it really helped you guys. Well, just the color overall. Oh, it, it's a pretty color too, huh? It's a really pretty color. So I brought, this is my this is my blended section here. These two, these aren't full drawers because they're at the bottom of that and I'm catching the top of this one. Um, but my blending section is right in here. And so these are the sections I'm working because I already have a really nice coat on the top and the bottom that I don't want to interfere with. So I'm only going to operate in this one section. And you guys, you know what? I think the appliques actually help a little bit too because they camouflage some of the brush strokes in the metallic. So then I just brush that 50-50 mixed into a pure deep woods. I can carry it down here just a little bit. 
I don't want to go onto this drawer. This is, I, I'm to pure deep woods from here down. I don't want to touch it. But that 50-50 mix helped a lot. I feel like I've got a nice medium tone in here. What does it look like on camera? Looks good. Are they all saying that looks terrible? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are terrible. Now you're down to two people watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mic drop. Everybody yeah, yeah. Walk, walked up. Is it Joe Biden and Trump? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think they went to them. We might be more entertaining. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. If I need to, I can come back and do a second coat on this section right here. But let's go ahead and turn this and do a flat portion, which is going to be a side. And then um, this should dry a little bit, and I can reassess if I want to do a second coat of that medium color in between. Um, does it look kind of blended at all? Like I'm feeling like I need a little bit lighter, right? Does it look too green in here? Right in there. Yeah, like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, a little bit of water because it's gonna start getting sticky. There we go. I feel like I just needed to lighten that up a little bit. It was too green and then it doesn't look like a blended section. I don't know if you'd ever wanna take painting advice, color advice from me. I still think there's six <laughs> colors on the planet. Everything's yeah. kind of like, eh, it's close to that. Okay. Is that better? Do you think that's better? Yeah, yeah. Anybody? So I also may need to mix a little bit more steel magnolia into my 50-50 mixture. I may need to lighten that up. That could be another option too, because even this is a little hard to tell that I've got a lighter color in here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah? yeah. I like this one. I'm mm -hmm. happy with this right here, but I'm not happy with this right here. So let's see if I, I'm just going to brush a little bit of my steel magnolia in there. Yeah, I think I need to lighten up my 50-50 mixture a little bit, just so it's a little bit more distinguishable from, I'm using water everywhere. Don't let your brush start sticking. If your brush is sticking, that's going to show in your final product. Lots of water with metallics. And then, they'll, as long as you don't have drips, you can use as much water as you want. And then the paint will, and then the paint will self-level. So what, now you do your own comedy too? And you get a, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I don't even need you anymore. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs> so I think that's going to be my solution. As I wrap the sides, I'm going to go ahead and lighten up that 50-50 mixture. I'm going to let this dry because I don't want to mess it up, right? So I'm huh. going to let this dry. I'm going to lighten up my 50-50 mixture and we'll go around the corner. I think it's funny. There's a few people on here that don't know you very well because they're, like, they're saying they'll you should leave it or they'd leave it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't know that I. They don't know I that don't he, know when to quit. Yeah. Yeah. Sean. Sean knows, but, but I learn a lot this way too. That's my excuse for it. Me too. Sean knows that I usually will keep going past the point of no return, and then um, I get mad and have to come back and fix it. And that's when I that's when I call Sean in, and he's like, "God damn it, woman! Why wouldn't you just?" <laughs> Why wouldn't you just leave it alone? Okay, so here I'm gonna come in and same concept, I'm gonna give myself a, li myself a little bit of the deep woods. And this is gonna be wet paint. So when it dries, it's gonna match where you see this line right here, cause this is all pure deep woods down from here. So if I brush over it, that's okay. Long linear brush strokes all the way across. I don't want anybody to uh, be distracted by the background. Oh, the wall texture and <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I I feel like I lighten I lightened up my 50/50 mixture a little bit so it's heavier on the steel magnolia and I think it's better. I think it was too close to the deep woods. Okay, that's what I'm brushing in here now. Oh, Peggy, you have no idea. I literally hear crickets on this live. Yeah. No, really, there's crickets out here. Peggy says, Sean the fixer. Yeah. Yeah, Sean is Sean is the fixer. Okay, and I'm I'm keeping my brush strokes nice and all the way across. Even if I brush all over the place, come back and smooth them out, okay? <laughs> if you thought that <laughs> the crickets were on their end. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, this is an exciting life. Literally crickets. <laughs> Okay, even if I was going to go all the way down, I would keep this same practice of making my brush strokes long, linear, even brush strokes. Don't stop in the middle. And then this is my um, 
steel magnolia that I'm going to brush into this middle section here. Even if I want to go like this to brush them together, keep it wet so it's moving. I can come back and brush straight through those so it's linear. Okay, I'm going to introduce a clean brush. That one's getting a little mm -hmm. bit muddy, I know, but I want to get this into pure steel magnolia and that one had started picking up a lot of my green. And when I'm trying to get to my pure color, I don't want that green in there. So I just always bring out extra brushes. Yeah, because you're going to want to bring that color down further. This one? To, yeah, to match the side or the front. I mean. Oh, yeah. Make sure you're wrapping your front. Oh, I see what you're saying. Pick oh, yeah, I see what down. you're saying. All right. So what he's saying is, because uh, he could see the front and I couldn't, is my steel magnolia starts. I just have better vision. Um... <laughs> Not yeah, really. You're the no. one over there wearing glasses. <laughs> glasses. Glasses. Okay, so I'm just moving that line a little bit, but I'm starting with water. It's a good arm workout. So then I'm looking, okay, this is about where my um, pure deep wood starts. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Just make sure my line is consistent wrapping the front to the side. So there is a question about, to me, what, <laughs> what did I do to Hey Hey? I'll give you a second. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Poor little Hey Hey. Well, <laughs> bless his soul. Cooked up really nice. <laughs> yeah, he was delicious. No, I'm kidding. He's actually quiet right now. <sighs> All right, I, I'm going to let this dry too. I feel like this is pretty good. Um, some of this. As long as my brush strokes are, you know, all going the same direction, I'm going to let this dry and let it even out. I've got nice, clean brush strokes. I don't have any drips. Oops, except for this right yep. here as I eat my words. Yep. I've got a little drip right there. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. Always water so it just glides. And as long as your paint's not dripping, the water's actually going to help you. Okay, so I like how... This is going across. How am I doing on my line to the front? You Probably bring that down a little lower. Down still? Yeah. Yeah, right in there. Right in there, okay. There you go. I'm just gonna go up with this. So my brush strokes are consistent going all the way up. It's easier over here. Oh man. Kim says we should switch places on a live. Yeah. There would get, there would, what am I gonna do? I almost did it last Nothing. week because my son had surgery last week, you guys, so I wasn't on last week. So I, I but I but I hadn't canceled it beforehand, so I called Sean in a panic and I was like, I'm supposed to be on, he's still not out of surgery, like you're gonna have to go on for me. And then it worked out. I was able to find Malia from Mustard Tree Market, took my life for me. But you guys almost got Sean. Almost. You were dangerously close. Dodged a bullet last oh, week. Oh, did they? So I'm just going back over this. Check. All right. And right about there is my line. So that's where I'm going to come back with that pure deep woods. And then I'm going to have to let this dry. And then it should be the same color as what's underneath it. I mean, I could keep going all the way down this side because then it's just deep woods from here. I agree with you. I like that 50-50 mixture. Should I keep going down? I probably should, huh? Yeah? No? You stop talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, problem? Looks, looks good. Yeah. <laughs> it okay, let's, my tongue. let's check my front. See how it looks. It's going to look a little bit streaky, you guys. Um, as long as your brush strokes are linear and even though, it still looks like an even coat. Because I'm blending straight across. I'm just going to fix this corner right here a little bit. A little bit. Using a super soft hand and I'm just feathering the colors to wrap that corner right there. Super soft hand and a little bit of water just to wrap that corner right there. And that just feathered it from here to here. So 
I'm going to do the other side and then I will come back and check out this front. And then it should be dry enough. These actually set up, I think, faster than the regular paints do. So we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take and give myself a little bit of wet paint just to work this into. And my line starts right about here. So this is like if I could tape this off, my blended section would go from here to about here. Thanks, Jason, but it's all just, you know, I'm winging it. I know a lot <laughs> about sprayers. Daily life? Yeah, that too. <laughs> Breathing. Yeah, uh, Sean's had trial by fire learning about sprayers. He's had Isn't that how all of my learning happens? Yeah, yeah, this is true. He's actually installing <laughs> our sprinkler system right God. now. <laughs> that is also trial by fire. We'll find out the first day we need to water our grass. We won't do it live yeah. until the second day. Yeah. <laughs> Everything always looks so good on Brandy's Live. We don't show you. There's an edited version, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. We don't show you the version. All right. Right about there. This is my 50-50 mixture that I just introduced. Lots of water. Keep it wet. Keep it moving. Let the paint self-level for you. Just don't have drips. So somewhere in between, like my paint is running off of my piece and it's sticking and I'm getting brush strokes. I'm using a super soft hand and I'm just feathering out those brush strokes really, really lightly. Peggy asked if I'm rethinking fire in the landscaper. No. <laughs> Now I'm trying no. to speed it up to show that one guy can do the yeah, job of no, 10. There, there's no regret firing the landscaper. I mean, you can't really regret it when, like, he didn't even show up. <laughs> it was a pretty easy decision. Do we want to pay him for not showing up or actually? All right. And then I've got to even this out. I've got a little bit of watermarks right here. So I'm just going to wrap this corner a little bit better. Yeah, we'll come back and just perfect this front area. But I like this right here. So now I'm going to come up into my pure steel magnolia. So I feel like um, what I learned tonight is pre-mixing that middle color really helped me to not have to try to brush them together on my piece as much. Now I still have little transitions right, you know, right in here where my pure color transitions into the 50-50 mixture, but they're such a close color that it's a really easy transition. So a couple things really quick. One, this how cool. many brushes you got going on I'm right now? I'm at four right now. Okay. I'm at four because I brought, I have three colors technically. I have Steel Magnolia, I have Deep Woods, and then I have the 50-50 mixture of the two. And then I introduce a new brush for my Steel Magnolia just to use in the areas where it's super pure because I don't want that to get dingy green looking. Lots of water. And then total side note, not paint related. Uh, Donna mentioned, this is kind of uh, somber. She mentioned her husband had a heart attack, so I hope he's okay. I'm sorry to hear that, Donna. I hope he's okay too. I hope he's okay too. I hope he's recovering well. Okay, so I'm, and now I'm going to come back and I'll turn this to the front and we will, um, I'm going to just come back and do this section again. Okay, so let's take a look at our front. So I feel like this looks okay. Although when I turn this way now, I do see a line right here. Mm -hmm. You're seeing that too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of a hum of a line there, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to come back and brush this out a little bit. Water first, so my brush doesn't start sticking. This is my brush for my pure deep woods that I'm brushing these together with. Because I want it to come down into this pure color. Oh man, Donna says he's home right now. So I, I almost feel like I need to don a clown suit and start juggling some pins that or something. That is best case scenario. That he's home and recovering and doing good. That is best case scenario. Congratulations, Donna. That's amazing. All right, I'm going to let this dry. This is my pure deep wood. So when this dries, this should be an invisible 
transition right here because that's exactly what's down here too. It's just wet paint versus dry paint is what you're seeing right there. Now there was the question thrown about the back, your background. Yes. I just want to say we've uh, been doing some patchwork of stuff that's been open for a while and we're kind of cleaning it up a little. Yeah, so my workspace is undergoing a, a redo right now. I see a little drip I'm going to catch. Um, and I got all new flooring. This wall that we're in front of right now in our construction of our house had to have the fire sprinkler system installed on it after the drywall was put in. They decided they needed a meter here. I'm gonna brush this up and down just to get even coverage right here, and then I'm gonna make my brush strokes match and just bring them back horizontally. Okay, um, so they decided they needed to install a fire sprinkler meter here, and so the wall had to be opened up again, and so now we are just getting around to fixing that. It has literally been an open wall for- What? Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's only what? No, 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 I'm stuck on the plurality here. What, we, 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 we are going to trip <laughs> over this. I was absolutely watching you while you were doing this. <laughs> I, was paying I do need management. I was I, paying yeah. close attention. I was supervising. I was very much involved. Um, I have dealt with that wall for the last two years almost being open. It was only, it's only like a what? One, one foot spot. I need to find the world's smallest violin. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's not out here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going back and I'm just perfecting this little area right here on the front. I'm going to assume that this is going to take two coats. That was my 50-50 mixture. This is my steel magnolia. I'm just going to lighten this up. I want to make it look like it's definitely blended, not, not just a dark green. Um, so I got brand new flooring in my workspace, which meant I had to clean everything up, move everything out, and now we're putting it all back together, and this will actually be a second staging wall for me. Now that it is no longer a glimpse into my fire sprinkler system. Ta-da! Okay, that's my 50-50 mix. I like it. And then this is my pure deep woods. Go right along this line right here. Constantly keeping the water in there just to keep my paint moving. You guys, lightening up that uh, the 50-50 mix with a little bit of extra steel magnolia really got me um, the color that I was after. I feel like this is a nice transition into the pure green. I'm pretty happy with this. I feel like it, my steel magnolia is a little bit higher over here, so I'm going to correct that on this side. It's always easier when I can sit straight on. When I'm over at one side, that one side always looks better than this one. So sit head on with your piece. Okay. If you're not feeling something, you're not liking how it looks, let your paint dry. Don't overbrush the paint, especially with your metallics. If you're overbrushing it, overworking it, those metallics are gonna tell you pretty quick. So don't overwork your paint. Let it dry and then come back to it after a few minutes from where you're sitting. You guys also, because metallics are so light reflective from different angles, they will catch the light different ways. That's what I was standing up trying to see if I can get a good glimpse of it on camera. So look at your piece from different angles, turn it different ways, stand up and walk to a different area of the room and you'll see different things in it. But the main point with metallics is just keep your brush strokes long, linear across the piece. Keep your paint wet. Do a base coat of the similar color underneath for coverage. Let's turn this and take a look at this first slide that we did. Let's see what this one's looking like. So I think that's pretty. What I like is the sheen on the Oh, it's beautiful. Metallics are one of the hardest things to photograph because it, you get it kind of on the top need, lip. Yeah, you need the light to catch the reflection in the paint, and that's really hard to capture on camera. All right, do you guys feel like you know something a little bit Not more really. about blending metallics? I would definitely say that 50-50 mixture helped me oh, a lot. Oh, that was the ticket. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me show you what my next step on this will be. We'll come down here where I don't have wet paint and I'm just gonna show you what I plan to do on this piece. So from here, I've got the new Dixie Belle gilding waxes. These are coming out, um, it looks like early 2021. Mm. Okay, and they have cham chameleon waxes, which are color changing waxes, you guys. Um, so let me show you how the color change effect looks in the wax, and then I'll put a little bit on my piece. So this color is called lilac, and it's in the container. It looks like a creamy white with a soft pink undertone, but when I put it on a darker background, it's going to show on there. Yeah, well, okay. It's another one of those tricks with metallic. So when I put it on a darker background, oh wow, you see that? So it's going to do the same thing, especially against this metallic paint where it's going to catch the light from every way. So that one's called lilac. This one's called, these are chameleon waxes. This one's called cactus. You can kind of guess what color this is going to reflect. Purple? Yes. Good guess. Okay. <laughs> Solid guess. Oh, Where my, are you laughing? My son's out here laughing. <laughs> okay, this one's called cactus. You see it? I'm so confused. <laughs> Not what you're expecting at all. Mind blown. And this one is called apricot. Guess anyone? Um, this it's just a sample smell. This is not what the finished product you're gonna smell like. We got samples where they were still playing with the smells. What types of essential okay. oils? Don't to tell add to me them for what color this is gonna be. I think it's gonna be like a gray. So mine smell mine smell like lavender, but I won't tell you they're gonna smell like lavender because they're. <laughs> Can you guys see those? So what I want to do with the with the colored waxes is I want to put them on the florals and then I'm going to keep the leafy parts and the hardware in a gold. So let's put a little bit of gold. This is um this is the Dixie Bell gold gilding wax. And it's a nice rich vintagey gold. And I'm going to put this this is how I'm going to bring back the distinctiveness of the hardware even though I painted it. So I'm just going to use gilding wax to bring back the color of the hardware. And it's really pretty against this rich green. Okay, so a little bit of gilding wax there. And then I'm also going to put it on my chipboard appliques. It's a really nice soft gold. Just enough to make them stand out against the green. I don't want them to be, you know, look like they're painted gold. I'm just using my finger to apply this. It's nice and soft. You know, but I could even do like silver hardware with the gold leafing or vice versa. And if I want to build up a darker color, I can just uh, let this dry. It takes about 24 hours to fully dry and then come back and add another coat. Will give me a richer color. So I'm adding the gold first, and then I'll come back and add a little bit of color to my flowers. And this uh, chipboard is just slightly raised, so it's not as thick as a whole applique would be. Oops. I got a little fat fingered and I just touched my background. So how you can remove gilding waxes if you get heavy handed is uh, baby wipes actually remove it when it's still fresh. Um, they have just a little bit of oil in it. These are oil-based gilding waxes, and oils remove oils. So I can just take a baby wipe and rub rub that a little bit, and it will take it off if, if my fingers get too fat and I get the background. But of course my fingers don't get too fat because they're super light and graceful. <laughs> I'm just going to look away. <laughs> yeah. We're going into uh, bad anyone, territory. Anyone? Yep. And then this is the apricot, which I think will be pretty on some of these flowers. And it's just kind of, I'm just going to lighten the tips of them. Sully says hi. Oh, Sully. Hi. Yeah. Careful. Hey, Sully. Uh, you guys, Sully, Joe with uh, Would You Bend, they just did a release when last week. Sully, I got your catalog. I have not looked at it. It's in my email. 
Okay, and then with that color changing on the flowers themselves, you'll really catch it when you walk by the piece and you may not notice it at first, but then when you get kind of, it's gonna catch the light just like it did when I put it on the box, the softness of those colors. So what colors did you use for this piece? So the colors of the paint, I'll go over again with you. I have a base of French linen and collard greens underneath my metallics just for coverage. And then my metallics are steel magnolia and deep woods. And then I used a 50-50 mixture of those in the middle. A little bit heavier on the steel magnolia. And that's a really pretty color in itself. I pre-mixed that middle color just to help me with the make the blending easier and I felt, felt like that was successful. All right, you guys. Who's winning the debate? Do we have a, a score yet? I am. It doesn't work like that? No. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? 49 to 0? What the heck? No way. Uh. <laughs> All right. Wait, someone knocked who out? Um, so this is kind of close to what my final look would be down here. I think silver would be pretty too. You guys want to try some silver? That's just me. Just Squirrel. Man, where are all my gilding boxes at? I used them. All right, here, here's a silver, guys. Ooh, that looks pretty on camera. It looks Ooh, okay. It does look pretty. Looks all right. Oh my gosh, I love that middle color right there, you guys. See that middle color? That one? Yeah. Okay, so silver. You guys want to see silver against the deep woods? This could be really pretty too. Oh, I kind of like the silver. Oh. Except I know she's going to use gold hardware, so I think we're going with the gold. Maybe I could, oh, do, gold. I could do Congo. I don't want it to get too busy though. I like the silver. Let's get on in there. Very pretty against the dark green. Do you think I could convince her with the silver? Because I actually really like that. Okay, so here's something too. If I decide that I want to go silver, I have two options. I can oh, either wow. wipe this gold back and remove it, or I can go right over the top. Once it's dry, I can go right over the top of it. Oh, I'm going to take it up a notch. There was the request to get on in there. So. Get on in there. We're going to get on in there. Yeah, so are you, where are you? Are you down here? I'm right here. It's like you don't even see me. Are you here? Yeah. yeah. So this is the silver gilding wax. I'm on the silver. I'm one. curious, what do you guys think? You guys like the silver? I kind of like the silver too. I'm surprised. I'm usually a gold person, but I like the silver against this. I just like cheap. What, what's the cheapest? Um, I also have... <laughs> hey, White gold? Wait well, a well. minute. <laughs> oh, wait. What, what are we talking about? You're lucky I'm not a jewelry girl. That's pretty. I like the silver. Here, here's what we'll do. We'll vote, okay? I'll post. I'll post this all and you guys can vote. Because I can fix this. So we'll do a drawer in silver, a drawer in gold, and then I have a white gold too that's kind of an in-between color. I feel like the 10 lost. No? The who? Like 10. You're talking like precious metals here. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. You missed the days when tin was a Yeah, it was metal. a big thing. It was a big thing. Yeah, with yeah. cans and stuff, like uh -huh. recyclables. Uh, lead, yeah. you know, yeah. No big deal. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do the flowers on that, so we'll just do the, the silver, and then let's check um, white gold. Now we're talking. That's better for the bank. <laughs> yeah, what's that, a mixture? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking on camera, too. Can you do both? Okay, you guys, um, I don't know. I like, I do like, I, I like them both. I don't know. This is white gold. So white gold is just a soft gold. No, 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 Peggy. No, 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 no platinum. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Sean bit the bullet and my wedding ring is platinum. So she thinks. I mean. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> Oh, don't think I didn't double check that before oh, I said I do. Don't you worry. By the time you take it to the pawn shop, this is all over anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. this girl's too smart for that. No way. Okay, what do you guys think on the white gold too? They're all pretty. 
So this goes to show you that you could mix this green with any color metallic and it, they all look pretty. This is a, got a great personality. <laughs> yeah. Just using my finger and going over the very tops of the appliques. Super easy. Makes them all stand out against the, the metallic background. All right, I'm gonna watch this back and let you guys tell me what you think. And of course, whatever one we do, I'll oh, go back and fix it. Fireball June. What you got That's to say, my Fireball? Lady. Looking at I the was, white gold. I was at um, Costco today, June. Yep. Fabulous stuff you got going on there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll have See, to sit Peggy's back and coming around. It. No more platinum. I am liking the white gold. I li I use white gold a lot. I use white gold gilding wax a lot. That's one of my favorites. That's by Art Alchemy. That's an Art Alchemy gilding wax. Art Alchemy. <clears throat> Again, that's another product that would be in the scrapbooking section. And it's a great crossover medium that works for furniture too. So anyway, I'm going to get off. You guys go catch up on the presidential debate. I know it's where you really want to be anyway. I appreciate everybody who watched tonight. I really did think I would have nobody hanging out with me. So I'm super appreciative that you guys spent Those this Thursday evening with, that, with me. So, I want to thank my mom. <laughs> I, like I, need to... <laughs> I owe this one to this award. Of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys i'm gonna pop off i really hope that helps you have a little more confidence confidence in blending metallics that 50 50 mixture definitely do it definitely do it um and uh, i'll finish up this piece and get this one posted for you guys but thanks so much for watching and being a part of it and you guys have a great weekend and i will catch you guys next thursday okay good night <laughs>